All right, the first thing we've got to do is face the block off, and I just used the 3 8 inch spindle gouge to do that, held a little bit of an angle. You don't have to worry a whole lot about getting the very center because you're going to cut that out for the inside of the lid anyway. Now here I start at the inside of the lid. I start with the tip low and then drop the handle, and which raises that tip up, and just start cutting. And I usually use the pull stroke on that, starting from the center and then working my way out. Uh, just dish that out as deep as what you want the inside of the lid. There's no set rule as to how deep or anything it has to be. And you can make the lid whatever diameter you want it compared to the rest of the box. I do a little bit of sanding here. I'm just going to go through one grid of sandpaper on this uh, demonstration. Then I use a Berdan tool to cut the rim for the inside of the lid. And then this rim will be what's going to be fit over the rest of the box. I use the caliper to check the depth of what I cut to mark, kind of gauge the outside and see how tall the lid has to be. I can just use a parting tool and cut the lid off. Now I'm going to cut down and leave probably an inch to three quarters of an inch of material down in the center of the lid uh, because I want to do the face or, or the edges of the lid. I usually start doing the, I guess you'd say, bottom area of the lid and then I'll start turning in uh, towards the top and shaping the top of the lid. I'll just use my fingers as my depth gauge to tell when I've got the lid down pretty thin. If you want, you could use calibers, but I've always just used my fingers. As you can see, you can't get clear down inside to the lid, but don't worry about that. When you cut the lid off and mount it on the block, you'll have access to the other half. Now that, that bottom edge and the bottom of the lid, you're you need to sand here because that's the only time you're going to get to it. And then I start sanding. Go ahead and cut the lid off. And then I'm going to turn it around and use a parting tool to fit it onto the rest of the stub that's left there. Now you want this lid to fit tight onto that tenon you're making. And then you use the 3 8 inch spindle gouge to go ahead and clean off the rest of the lid and round it off. You can also use a chatter tool on that lid if you want, uh, the edge of a skew to put some lines in it, however you want to finish it. Uh, I do an assortment of everything. At times I've even left little finials on them that I turned on the top. Once you get it down smooth, you'll, again you'll go back with your sandpaper and again go through all the grits you want. I'm just using one grit here in the example. Now, like I said, this lid is on there real tight right now, see, so that you can get to it. You could use paper towel to help hold it on there. I use, have to use a uh, skew to pry the lid off. Make sure you pry from all sides uh, so that you don't snap it in half. Like I say, the paper towel over that stub and then put the lid on, that'll take care of it. Now I always turn just a little bit more as you can see, just barely touched it so that the lid comes on and off easy. Now I'll start out with the skew tip down, lower the handle, which starts making my cut into the inside of the box. And then once I get there, I'll use a pull cut and a push cut with that 3 8 inch spindle gouge. As you can see, I start the tip low and then raise it up, and that's usually how I get started in the center. And then the drag cut coming out, and then I use the push cut coming back in. I believe I get some better pictures. There we go. Now you can see how I actually push that back in and and drag it back out. You'll every once in a while you'll get some chatter going on the inside there. Just keep working with it. You'll eventually get there. Uh, there there's a little bit of it. See, it's kind of hard to. You've got the knob right in the center that is a little hard to start sometimes. But don't get too worried about it. We're going to take just a scraper, see, then, and take that knob out. And then sometimes the scraper is easier for people to smooth out the inside of that bowl. So we're going to use a scraper and just kind of smooth the inside of that, or not bowl, but box. 
out until we get the shape we want inside. Then again, we can use a little bit of sandpaper and use all the grits you want and get it as smooth as you want. For this, I'm just going to give it a real quick blast of sandpaper. Now, I'm going to measure the depth with the end of my caliper and then I can come out and set the depth of my bowl. Now, if you notice this parting chisel, I'm actually cutting off at an angle, see, to make the bottom of that bowl dished in the center. And that way you've just got the outside rim sitting on the table and not the whole bottom of the box. After you take it down a ways, then I'll use my 3 8 spindle gouge again to shape the outside. And again, it's whatever shape you want. If I don't shape a lot of it, I may go back in afterwards and recut the inside to make those walls thinner. And sometimes I just leave the walls wherever I had them. As you can see, the spindle gouge does a pretty nice job. This is crab apple wood, so it, it turns really nice. Uh, but I just shape the outside to whatever shape I want. Do a little bit of sanding on it just to kind of clean things up. Now I'm going to use the corner of a skew and do some burn marks on it. The skew made the little grooves. Now just a piece of wire and just hold her till she smokes and makes the burn you want. And that leaves a little bit of a burr up on the edges of the burn. So I always go back in with sandpaper and kind of hit it again after I burn it. And then to keep the bottom from chipping, you'll see I hold the sandpaper in and then kind of roll it back out over the edge. And that's just to kind of round off that bottom corner so they don't chip it. And I'll go ahead and part it off. And sometimes I'll part it down to about an eighth of an inch and then cut it off with like a coping saw and other times I'll part it off. Then I use a carving tool to take the nub off the bottom. And after you trim that nub off, you can sand it if you want. Uh, you know to really clean it up nice but otherwise I'll just use the carving tool only and there's your finished box the lid fits nice the burn marks and it's ready for a finish